Welcome to the Operation Safety Maintenance Troubleshooting and Repair Guide Overview for Lifetrack, the open source tractor as of December 2011. Okay, so there's a couple of general comments to make about the equipment that you're being presented with. First of all, this is life-size, real dangerous equipment and all safety and operation procedures should be followed at all times, otherwise you lose, you risk getting injured, hurt, or even killed by these machines. They're operate, they operate on 27 to 54 horsepower typically. That is not a plaything, serious equipment. The thing to keep in mind about the present release is that we are now in a beta release stage, meaning about 150 or so hours of field testing that we've put on these machines, but that's not, not enough to actually see all that can go wrong with these machines. Maybe there are still failure modes we haven't seen. And only after thousands and thousands of hours of testing will the machine really stabilize and get ready for general adoption by the rest of the world. So right now, this is for the developers and makers, people who are aware. Uh, we do not recommend this to be used by people who do, do not have awareness of their body, of, of heavy equipment. We do not recommend that you use these things alone, and you should all, always wear safety equipment such as hard hats, eye protection, ear protection, gloves, and things when dealing with this equipment. There's another important point to keep in mind about these machines, that, that open source ecology is producing open plans distributed to the whole world, so a lot of the machines may be custom. So be careful if you're exposed to one or more of the machines, because they may each be slightly different basics of tractor operation. So this is a power device that runs from hydraulic fluid power. So if you've got the power cubes on, you connect the hoses to the inlet of the hydraulics. This is the inlet of the hydraulic system. Then you can drive the wheels or the cylinders on this tractor. So you step inside the seat and the leftmost valves, these two valves, to go forward, depress both of them. To go backwards, go up on them. To turn, you, you move only one, or move one and the other one in the opposite direction to turn in the according direction, which means that you'll be turning this valve system. This, the left valve controls the left side of the tractor. The, the right valve controls the right wheels. So when, they're go, when they both go together, uh, that means you're going straight. If they go opposite of each other, that means you're turning. So it's it's same as a skid steer operation. Now, what are the other valves? The the second set of this last one in the first triple valve system is an auxiliary system, which has quick connects on it, so you can attach any device you want, any external device like a sawmill or a rototiller or whatever, whatever you you want to power, you can attach it through that valve. Now, the right set of valves is for the loader. So this is the up and down on the loader arms and this is curl of the bucket. So you can be digging soil or whatever, um, lifting things, whatever you need to do. That's the basic operation. Uh, not much to it. It's just just turn on the power cube, uh, turn, it on, turn it on, step into your driver's seat and you're off to go wherever you need to go. We've got tracks in this machine so you can go through a lot of heavy terrain. Um, we are currently modifying the, the wheel drive system. Results forthcoming very soon. What are the, upon startup or any adjustments that have to be made? Yes, there's a couple. Each of the valves has a pressure relief on it. So if you want to change, reduce the pressure to the wheels, that's adjustable. You do it by the pressure relief setting on the first valve. Um, that is useful depending on what kind of motor you have. The, the rating of the motor that you will use on this, the hydraulic wheel motors on the tractors, they're going to be rated for a particular value, so you have to stay within that. And you can use a pressure gauge to measure that pressure there. Uh, the quick attach plate on the tractor is able to accommodate a number of implements. Like right now we have the bucket on, and the way you put that on is you go up to the device with your quick attach plate and you pick it up. You can pick it up and then you tight, tighten the machine, whatever you've got, whatever attachment you have, you, you tighten on with the bolts and the two eyes that will be later quick attach 
uh, we're gonna install a quick attach lever uh, in the next model. As, as a regular practice, you do want to check the integrity of hoses. You want to check that your bolts are tight. These are. Uh, the whole frame is designed for disassembly with bolts. And these are lock nuts, so they shouldn't come off. But make sure that every time you use it, just do a good visual inspection to make sure there's no obvious errors like loose bolts or broken things anywhere. And check that the hoses are intact. Um, yeah. The hydraulic motors on the wheels can, can be replaced very easily for maintenance, so if, if anything goes wrong, that's the worst thing that can happen. And right now we're actually installing the, the full dismountable wheel set for this tractor. We're experimenting with that, seeing if, uh, if that actually works. But if that is the case, then, then you've got a frame, you've got wheels that can be taken off readily and replaced, you've got a power unit that can be replaced. So it's pretty much maintenance free. All the parts are sealed, bearings are sealed. Um, maybe a paint job we can definitely finish up a paint job on this to keep it free from rust keep it away from the elements it is a good idea to keep the power cube under cover so you don't get rain and and freezing troubleshooting what happens when a tractor doesn't run the most common thing is that there's a hose not connected that means you try to turn on a power cube and it doesn't turn on that means a huge resistance, power cube never turns on. What if a power cube does turn on and the tractor doesn't run? Well, it could be that, that some hose is also disconnected or that the, there is no hydraulic fluid in the power cube itself. It's spinning, but it's not producing any fluid power. So once again, check the fluid level, check the connections. Those are the main things. The only trouble, the, the failures we had on, on this tractor was the couplers broke on the motors. So if, if you've got, if apparently you, you turn on one of the levers uh, and say everything is working but the tractor is not moving forward, well, it could be that the hydraulic motor broke, you need to replace it. The coupler could have broken, you need to replace that. But other than that, there's a there's a firm connection between the motor and the wheels. So if the motor is spinning, the wheel should be spinning. Um, if the, you can see, for example, here, if this bolt this bolt might break, uh, then you won't get power to the wheels. The motor will spin and be okay, but it, you won't be getting any traction. So you have to. These bolts are replaceable here. Regarding safety. Just this, this is a heavy piece of equipment, it's dangerous, it's a power device. Don't stand under the loader. Um, do not go nuts on terrain where you can flip over and, and kill yourself. You do want to have a seat belt on, which is not installed in this model right here yet. We do recommend a seat belt system. We do recommend a skid plate on the bottom of the tractor so things uh, coming from the ground, you don't get hit by anything from the anything from the ground, like twigs or rocks. Uh, you do want to have a a cover plate on the top, so if you're lifting heavy things, in case they fall fall or things fall on top of you, you don't get hurt here. So uh, a cover plate on the top, some safety shield on the top, would be quite desirable, and in fact, uh, on the sides as well. There is a danger of pinch points here, so stay away from moving parts like when you're inside the tractor or outside of it. Don't put your hands in pinch points such as this point here where you can chop your fingers off readily. Don't put your hands <laughs> in the cylinders or if you're moving them up and down. Don't pay attention to where your hands are so you don't chop them off. The loader, front loader, has much more power than than it needs to actually so you can lift I mean the rated load load capacity of this is about 8,000 pounds but before you pick up 8,000 pounds you're gonna tip that's a basic overview of the life track operation maintenance um, thank you very much